Hey guys, Christina Carmen here with Liberty Canine Dog Training. I got my girl Penny, who we're continuing her camp journey with me, and of course Duchess, our uh, our everybody's friendly uh, neighborhood cat around here. So Penny is doing fantastic with everything. She's had a full uh, full fledged first week of the prong training collar, the remote collar. She's doing great. We're starting to add some major distractions with the other dogs and other people and so on. We'll be taking her on her first field trip later. And she's just being very, very good. She'll still get pretty curious with the cat if the cat just all of a sudden took off and started leaping on the couch or doing something completely nutty. But all in all, she uh, she's really just a lot more, you know, well received with, uh, with the cat. And she's doing a really, really great job with controlling her impulses uh, when, uh, when, when she knows that she's supposed to be nice and chill and calm like this. So today we're actually going to start on the treadmill with her, which is a fantastic way, one, just to plain and simple, get your dog to burn off some energy. Your dog wakes up every morning with a certain amount of energy and they're either going to expend it every day in a very positive, structured, oriented way or in a pretty negative, bouncing off the walls, crazy chaotic way. Plain and simple. So. Of course, your pack walk is your number one way of getting your dog super structured and Duchess just left it on top of the couch. So you saw that little reaction, but she controlled that really well. The pack walk is the best way to get your dog some super structured, you know, type of exercise because you're definitely the leader there. They're following. You're out and about. You're getting fresh air. It's excellent. But in reality, one, there's some dogs that are very, very high energy that, let's be honest, you probably can't run 10 miles with them every day. And then there's going to be weather days that it's really not safe to be outside, whether it's a 95, 100, 105 degree and humid day, or it's a zero degree with blizzard and windy conditions and so on. Either way, it's not going to be great for you to be outside with your pets for more than a couple minutes for potty time. So the treadmill is going to be a great alternative during those particular days. The treadmill is great when you have dogs that really need some extra socialization with cats, with strangers, with dogs, with a lot of other distractions because when they're on the treadmill they have to stay focused. Literally the floor underneath you is moving. If you at any time get distracted and unfocused it's going to go out from underneath of you. So they have to stay super concentrated on it. Which is, which is really positive for these dogs. They can get so unfocused so easily. So it teaches them to simply focus on one thing and not have some of that ADHD that, uh, that they so often get. So that's very, very, uh, very helpful for a lot of the dogs. And then it really does help to build a lot of confidence in your nervous dogs. So if you have a dog that is, you know, really, I don't want to say afraid of their own shadow, but they're definitely nervous, they're insecure, they really need a ton of, uh, of leadership exercises and things like that, it's just a great way to boost their confidence along with like fun stuff like agility and things like that. It's just a great exercise that gives them a job to do, it gives them a purpose and makes them, you know, really feel fulfilled. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get Penny started on the treadmill today. They did try her um, at home. She kind of wigged out about it a little bit. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're definitely going to use a prong training collar on her. Now she's already had the prong on her for the full week. She knows exactly how to use it. And all that really means is whatever direction I'm pulling it into, she knows that she goes in that direction to relieve that pressure. So this way, if she's in any way really starting to get stressed out or she really is starting to like put on the brakes or not really be able to walk on the treadmill well, I can go ahead and help her out with it and she won't put any resistance against it. Whereas if I had a regular harness or regular flat collar or anything that's uh, a lot more just uh, in place, uh, that doesn't uh, put a whole lot of pressure on her, dogs learn really quick to fight against it. So that would actually make my entire treadmill experience much worse for her because she's going to actually be fighting the collar at the same time that she's fighting the treadmill and that's what I don't want. So this way she has a really great understanding of what the prong collar means so I can go ahead and help her. It's a guide, it's a communication tool to let her know exactly what she's supposed to be doing and I have a feeling she's going to respond great to it since she's already had you know some really great training with it so far. So what I'll do is we'll go ahead I'll stand up 
I'll get her on the uh, face in the right way. Kind of free her up, of course. You can't be laying down and running on the treadmill. I'm going to have her face in the right way. I'm going to fix her prong collar so it is definitely way up on the neck, right behind the ears. Very important, guys. That's where you want your prong collars. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start it and we'll see how she do it. Now I have both of my legs on each side of her, my left on the left and right on the right. I'm basically straddling her. This way, if she were to get really kind of jumpy about it, I can also use my knees to kind of support her and nudge her in the right direction. But for the most part, I'm going to be helping her with the leash. So we'll go ahead and see what she does. And I'll start super slow. There we go. Woo. So you see she's kind of a little, there we go. She's doing pretty nice about this though. So we'll get her kind of understanding. So I start super slow guys. I just want her to understand. There we go. Just kind of looking around, curious about it. There we go. A little bit of help right there with the uh, with the prong collar to get her moving forward. So she has a really good kind of mechanism of walking forward on it. So I'm actually I'll go ahead and move it up to 1.5 to get her moving. Very good. And I'm doing very light light nudges with the prong collar to just help her in the exact spot that I want her. I don't want her too close to the front because she's going to bang her paws on that and that's not going to feel good. It might surprise her a little bit. But I also don't want her too far back because I don't want her falling off the thing. So I'm just going to help her kind of get in the right spot. If she wants to kind of get unfocused like that, I'll help her get back up. There we go. Very nice. So it doesn't look like she's going to be flailing around. She's actually an easy one. So I'll go ahead and I don't have to completely, whoop, come on, completely straddle her. Perfect. And then as far as finding the best speed for her, I basically go up three or four notches at a time. So right now I believe we're at a 2.0. Very nice. Nice rhythm. So I'm going to move up to like a 2.3 maybe. And what I'm looking from her is a trot. A nice little bounce to her step that's pretty fluid. And you'll probably see the big difference. That you're really just looking for them to nicely trot and get a really fluid, smooth movement with it. And you see right now, she's actually being a super rock star with it. I'm going to help her back up right there. I am only have pressure on this leash if she needs help. It's loose. She's making the decision right now to do it for her. I don't want to be holding her in position because that's going to cause a lot more panic. So right there, she's making the decision. I'm only using the prong collar if she needs a little bit of help. Very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to 2.6. And I'm just going to get her to a speed where she has a really nice trot going. Maybe let's try 2.8. Just to give you guys an idea of range, when I have little itty bitty dogs, chihuahuas, orkies, and so on, I typically have them about a 1.5, 1.6. I go all the way up to some of my speed dogs, which is a very high energy Doberman that I, uh, that I take in and some other crazy labs and whatnot. They actually can do up to like a 4.0, uh, pretty, uh, pretty nice, quick, uh, nice quick trots, super high energy dogs. So I think maybe, let me try one more, this is a 2.9, and you can actually hear it in her feet, or I want a really nice trot. That's actually pretty close. Let me try and see what a 3.0 looks like. There you go. So she's actually right now kind of having a difficult time keeping up with it. So I may go ahead and turn it down to 2.9. Good 
Euro Penny. Lots of encouragement. She's being a great girl. Very good. Go ahead, turn over here. Come on, Penny. Up. So if you're going to get any panic like that, you can use your prompt collar just like this to kind of help her. Good. That was perfect. And you saw she got a little nervous right there because I was getting in front of her. I simply tugged on the leash to let her know to recollect herself and I pulled her a little bit towards the wall to help her uh, help her in that position. Very nice. Good girl, Penny. You see how she has a really nice bounce to her step? That's, that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Awesome. Now, of course this goes without saying, I hope guys, but definitely always supervise your dog when you're uh, when you have them on the treadmill especially if you have them on a prong training collar or even any collar guys just supervise your dog plain and simple but over time as she gets really good with this you can go ahead and you can pretty much tie the leash right here and i'll still be next to her to keep an eye on her but and she's not that great at it so i'm not going to let it go just yet but uh you can see how she's really getting the hang of it, and I'm only helping her as needed. Very nice. I'm actually going to turn it down to 2.8. Perfect. There we go. Nice, kind of just a fluid trot that she has going on. That's perfect. So now, for the most part with these dogs, I'll start off to 5 to 10 minute sessions. And then if I'm actually going to do it with them every day, a 20 to a 30 minute session, um, roughly, uh, every uh, every morning just to burn off some extra energy and so on. Of course, on days where you're doing absolutely no pack walks outside because of weather or other, uh, um, other conditions or situations, such as uh, you're sick or something like that, you can do it for, uh, for your dog's allotted amount of time of exercise. Now, how you want them to get off safely. So what I'm going to do is I'm slowly going to turn it down there we go, and then I'll go ahead and stop it, because I don't want her bouncing off. Good girl. Perfect. Because that's a kind of another unsafe thing to do. And then she can nice and calm, okay, you're free. Good. So just like I want her, good girl, to go on it nice and smoothly, I also want her to go off of it nice and smoothly. She should understand that at any time that I'm on this treadmill, I'm kind of just go on it in a nice, relaxed kind of state of mind. I shouldn't be crazy and completely unruly and whatnot. Can you sit? Good girl. So that's it for the treadmill. Uh, you know, a little 101 with her. And we'll basically just do this every day for about, like I said, 15, 20 minutes just to help her get focused. We'll have the cat, you know, walking around her and so on. And then, of course, Penny sit. Um, of course, this is going to be a great tool for when she's ready to go home. So they could use this at home to uh, to burn off some of her energy, since they have sort of, I mean they have a little girl or something. So if it's raining, everybody can just play inside. Penny's on her treadmill, getting a good workout, and this is also going to be really solid for her rehabilitation in general with the cats in the house because it's going to help her stay focused, even if the cats are walking around, being naughty around her, and so on. So this is going to be great. So that's a wrap for today. What we'll do next is, of course, big field trips with her and uh, lots and lots of distraction work. So this is just step one, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Yes, yes, yes.